Hello, my name is Julia Krause. It is April 21st, 2023. I'm here with the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program. This interview is part of the Tidewater Main Street Project. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking to today? Julia Graham. Thank you. Um, when and where were you born? I was born December 24th, 1939, in Milsus County, right up the road. And uh, what were your parents' names and occupations? My parents and Mr. and Mrs. Josh Holmes. She was a housewife, and he was a waterman at first, but he ended up being the sheriff of Milsus County. Wow. And uh, were they from here, too? Yes, he's right down the road, and she's up the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, where did your family live when you were growing up? Where did they live? Yeah. Saluda. Um, when did you attend St. Clair Walker High School? 1954. And what grades did you? Eighth grade. Eighth grade, just the eighth grade? Yes, eighth grade, yeah. We went to elementary till the seventh grade, end of the seventh grade. And we attended St. Clair Walker, I did, in 1954. And I graduated in 59. Oh, so you went there all the way through 12th grade? Mm hmm. Thank you. Um, did any other family members attend St. Clair Walker High School? No, it wasn't. Think of that walk high school when my mother attended school in 1936. Mm -hmm. It was mostly training school. But, uh, and my, my other family members, all of us, my siblings attend St. Clair Walker. Mm -hmm. I'm the oldest. And my brother Josh, my brother Elmo, my brother Woodrow and my sister Hallie. But she didn't graduate from St. Clair Walker because integration um, has started, so she, did she? Wait a minute, you have to ask her because she was in the transition of, yeah. Um, what are your earliest memories of St. Clair Walker High School? Hmm. earliest memories. Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, that was back then when I was a kid. The black citizens of Middlesex County had to uh, sort of had dinners and fundraising to build, you know, to keep the school going because the state did not participate with the black students like they did the white. And I remember going to Antioch Church and they would take up offerings to help with the school. Um, and um, what were conversations about school like at home? What was conversation? Yeah. You going to school. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> And I had to walk about a mile to catch the school bus on 17. How long did you ride the school bus? Like, was it far? Uh, not too, not too long. Above Saluda, about a mile above Saluda to St. Clair Walk. It wasn't bad for me, but the kids up the road at Jamaica, they had a pretty good ride. Mm. Um. Which teachers impacted your experience most at St. Clair Walker High School? Oh my goodness, Mrs. Holmes, Mrs. Easter Holmes, and Mrs. Cameron. They were, what I said, black history teachers. They would, they would leave the curriculum and, and she would, they would teach us, you know, what wasn't in the, History books. Mm -hmm. 
Is that like on a national level or like they would teach you about local history? Yeah, local history and national history. Um, and what sort of role models or mentors did you have in school? Oh, they had good role models because back there then, they want you to succeed in order to, you know, go out in the world and make a living because everybody was in college but trade like typing and so forth and so on. Then my walking cane fell. <laughs> yeah, I get it. So that sort of thing, you know. And of course we had home economics. We taught you how to cook and do things like that. So what and we had science too, mm -hmm. Mr. Lomax. But Science was my thing. I was sort of the typist and, you know, the things like that. And I liked history. Mm. Um, what memories from class, lessons, celebrations, maybe examinations, really stick out to you? What? Lessons? Lessons? Oh, let's see. What do you mean say about life or what? Thank you. I think back then you you know, everybody was your parents. Mm -hmm. And the lesson they you know you had to Like now, kids tell you what they want. Back then, then the older people told you what they want, and they <laughs> and they always had an example, you know, set an example to you to follow. And it was no getting around it because if you did something that wasn't kosher, they didn't have phones, but. Your parents knew about it when you got home. And then if they didn't know about it when you went to church on Sunday, that were teachers hmm. in the church. <laughs> so that was the lesson was everybody was the teachers was concerned about you succeeding and staying out of trouble. <laughs> uh, so like what comes to your mind when you just hear the, you know, the word St. Clair Walker High School? Some of my best days, if I can. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you want to talk about it? Well, I, I wasn't an athletic, but you got to meet different kids from down the other part of the county back then. In. You know, you had to be home before sundown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because some of the kids, the parents didn't even have cars. Mm -hmm. We walked, you know. So it was, to me, it was social. To, as I said, meet the kids from down Deltaville. You can, you ever been to Deltaville? No. That's a long way down there, but I guess we're 20 miles from here. Uh, and some of the kids came from, let's say, Amberg in the Deltaville area on up to St. Clair Walker. It was the only high school in the county, black high school mm -hmm. in the county. So then I didn't like algebra. <laughs> but I was teaching Mr. St. Clair Walker, he was the algebra teacher, and he was so good at it because he would take time and make sure that you understand what we were supposed to learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, is there any like fun activities that you used to do with your yeah. friends? Yeah, we used to, 
go to back then in, didn't have clubs mm -hmm. like they have now. And you had the little house parties, you know, uh, on weekends sometime. And, uh, and they had the school dances on holidays. And in the sun, and in the summertime, it was nothing <laughs> because, <laughs> because uh, you know everybody was well, school was out, and for the summer, and most of the kids mm -hmm. in this area, they uh, if they didn't go north with a relative to work, they worked in the fields. Picking tomatoes for the yeah. canning factory, or picking beans, or something like that, and and it was a way of socializing too. Because as I say, when school was out, you didn't see nobody mm -hmm. <laughs> because you was in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> like I say. And uh, and it was fun because you saw the kids that you went to school with. Some of them was out. Yeah. And, and it was fun. Yeah. So, so uh, is there any uh, events uh, that you remember that you participated on in the school, in the high school? Hmm? Are there any like events that you remember that you participated, you know, in any events in the high school? Hmm. Any science club activities? Yeah, yeah, we had the, the science clubs. We had the the, the oh my goodness, metal block now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had the different uh, the athletic clubs, the, the science club, the Junior League, mm -hmm. they had, uh, what else did we have? It's a fun, my goodness. <laughs> Come back to that. That's fine, that's fine, <laughs> yeah, take that. Uh, so like, um, we heard from many other people, like there used to be uh, many like games, sports, like yeah. basketball, oh. like so. Oh yeah, they had. We had everything except football. Mm -hmm. We didn't have football. But Sinclair Walker won the the state championship Ooh. one year, and we had our trophies. We had, and uh, and when they integrated the school, they took our trophies mm. and up to Millsap High School. Then when. 2020, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, all the black trophies disappeared. Cool. So, I don't know what happened to them. So they got thrown out by mistake, but we had several uh, athletic trophies, St. Clair Walker did back in the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh so, like, do you have any, um, like, memories of your, like, food or your lunch time in high school? Oh, we had excellent cooks. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, good food because to say we had excellent cooks and plenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, food wasn't a shortage of plenty. Yeah, do you remember food. any events or any incident that happened in your lunch time or, like, the cafeteria. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you had to keep an eye on your dessert. <laughs> Sometimes you eat your dessert first, <laughs> because, because the fellows was, was. If you turn your head, they had it. The, the basketball players and the baseball players. They, yeah, but we had excellent cooks. Mm -hmm. Do you have any memories from class lessons or celebrations, examinations, anything that you want to share? Yeah, we had, uh, back then, we had the May Day mm. and a Christmas plays they had. 
And uh, let me see, we had the Halloween parties. Okay. So, so mm-hmm. is there any experiences you want to say about the May Day? Well, we wrapped the maypole, that's all I can <laughs> <laughs> until, you know, this, say, it was, when was that day? And they had, you know, had, as I say, we wrapped the maypole mm-hmm. and the parents came out to the celebration and and it was it was nice, warm weather. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. Sounds fun. Uh, so uh, what do you think uh, are the, like, some of the biggest a- accomplishment in and out of school or any, like, tough times for you? The b- biggest accomplishment? Yes, in and out of school. In and out of school. Well, I think school gave me an opportunity to learn and to, I didn't go to college. I went to a trade school. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in fact, I did all kinds of work. I worked at the seafood plant. I worked at the canning plant. And then I uh, went to move to Philadelphia for five years. Mm. And I worked as an assistant to an interior designer. He designed office buildings, and I got a job with him, Mr. Lawrence, and then I moved back to Virginia, and I went in the correctional office, and then I thought about leaving that and went to computers. and. I said, this is not for me because, and I enjoyed it, but just with kids, you know, you had to, and then this job I had was always in Richmond, you know, mm-hmm. and the commute back then was terrible because they didn't have 64 like they have it now. Mm-hmm. So I stuck with the correctional. So. That's why. So that, that's yeah. That, oh, oh, okay. yeah, that's why I had that too. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was provide you know, me benefits and things like that. So that was my career. <laughs> so like you travel to different places, different states. Like how was your experience? Like you know, traveling to different states. You know, I I was lucky enough to travel. You know, it was nice. It was, I enjoyed going to different states and working in different states. Mm-hmm. But I, what the, well, I'm going to say the, it's too close, you know, buildings. See, I was used to, where I live, it's farm land. Mm-hmm. And I could never get to the houses so close together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but now I was lucky enough to travel to Dubai mm-hmm. and to England and France, and that was quite an experience. Quite an experience. Yeah. Yeah. I have a relative. Her her daughter graduated from Howard, and. She met a fella that uh, he graduated from Howard. He was from, he was a military brat. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't say it, but that we required. <laughs> anyway, he uh, couldn't find a job in his field. So he put his resume online, mm-hmm. international. And the United Arab Emirates picked it up and he got a job over there working for the uni- for the Emirates. And he stayed, he still worked for him, but he's stationed here in Georgia. Mm-hmm. But uh, his mother-in-law wanted to go visit her daughter, and she didn't want to go by herself. So 
she asked me to go with her. And I didn't, th didn't think no more about it, you know. So, but a year after, she called me to ask me, was I ready? I said, ready for what? <laughs> To Dubai, and I said, okay, and it was, you know, it was nice. It was really, I really enjoyed it. We stayed over the three weeks. Wow. Yeah, and she, they had a home over there because we didn't have to pay hotel expenses, stuff like that. But I enjoyed it. Yeah, and so it gave me, you know, a chance to do a little traveling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so was the work reason you coming back to Virginia? Yes, in, in a family. I had three kids and babysitting and, you know, when you leave your kids with somebody, you know, you had to make sure. So and the work wasn't the, the, the reason I moved back. Just, I could see myself raising kids in Philadelphia at the time. Mm -hmm. So I came back to the country, and I was lucky enough to get work because I'm one of them type of people, if you want to work, you can find work. Yeah. It might not be what you want, mm -hmm. but you can find work. So that's when I went to the seafood, and then I had put an application in for the correctional for the state, and I got it. So, yeah, so it made a, a decent living, you know, because I didn't have to worry about rent because my grandparents had plenty of land, and they and my grandparents built a house for a whole house full of kids that didn't have but one, and that was my mother. <laughs> so they had plenty of room. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad to say that I live, I built a house on some of the land that has been in our family ever since 1877. So we, so I, I have a house there on the on the property. Yeah, and it's we don't farm no more. We lease it to. Yeah, because nobody, the boys left and they don't want to be farming. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, going back to your uh, high school life, like uh, compared to now, like what are the changes that you see right now, like in your oh, life? Oh my lord! Yeah. Different, different night and day. You know, it's. I couldn't tell you, but you know, but the educational part of it, but you know, what the teachers. When I hear the teachers have to deal with the day, that was, wasn't even on the map for t back there then. You know, with the disciplinary things that happened in school, the teachers mm -hmm. can't do this, can't do that. And what should I say? Because we didn't have, as I say, Everybody was your parent, and they would tell you what they would tell you what not to do, and they when didn't hit you, but they had this use your brain, and you can't even do that now, you know, to a student. Mm -hmm. The teacher would come over, ask you a question, and she had went over it, and you got it wrong. She would. Mm -hmm. She would just, and that was the sign so. to think, use your brain. But, and then we didn't have the drug problems the, like they have now in some schools. And they have technology now, which we didn't have, mm -hmm. which is a good thing, mm -hmm. in a way. <laughs> I'm illiterate. <laughs> because uh, now, by sometime, my 
grandson comes up and he'll play, put his PlayStation. Yeah. And he forget to change the TV back. And I have to call my nephew to get the TV. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's better in a way, real. It's a whole lot better mm -hmm. when it comes to education mm -hmm. than when we had, when we were back there then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, because. Yeah, so what about the setting outside of school? Like, what changes do you see? Mm -hmm. The setting outside of school, like, what do you see, like, the differences? Well, as an older person, see, my, my, uh, my kids are grown, and I have, a, I have my grandson. He's already graduated from college. Wow. So, and I don't have young kids around me. Now, I haven't been in the family, but I'm not in connection with the kids that are in school now. Mm -hmm. So, but, we, you know, we, sometimes I go with my nephews and around the kids, and they are much more, much more progress than we are. They know more now than I <laughs> did, you know, because technology. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's it's better in a way. I don't go for this artificial intelligence they predict now, but it's it's better. It's a whole lot better. And these kids gonna need all the technology they can get, you know, to learn what's because the world is not going backwards, it's moving forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, so yeah. um, some of the experiences that we heard from other people was like, you know, the school, like the teachers used to know everyone in the family, like the mm -hmm. parents yeah. and everyone. Yeah. And um, it just used to feel like they have like a second home, you know, they yeah. know everyone and they yeah. really care for them. Yeah. But now we don't find that much, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Is there anything that we want to add on that? Well, say, uh, they, to me, they uh, were more, you know, with, I should have put the word. They're more, uh, they were more, oh, they wanted you to succeed more. Mm -hmm. Then the kids, then the teachers. I ain't gonna say it's the teachers because the kids can be. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, I think they took more interest in you back there then than the teachers did now. Because one thing I think, because the parents were behind the teachers. And now, if a child go home and tell mom and daddy, the teacher says so and so and so, oh my goodness, she probably lo might lose her job. Mm -hmm. But back then, they listen at what you had to say, then they listen at what the teacher had to say. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of ten, You know the score. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, do you remember any regional or like national news uh, while you were in school? Mm. News, news. Yeah. Any local or like maybe a national news that you remember of, you know? That was quite a talk in your family or with your friends. Mm. Well, if the house didn't burn, somebody's house didn't burn down, or oh. wasn't too much crime mm -hmm. in Middlesex. Not too much crime in Middlesex now, but <laughs> but. Uh, 
you know, of course, if uh, it just wasn't, you know, as I said, if somebody's house didn't burn down or a car accident, mm -hmm. that was the biggest news, and 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 I guess if back then. In, If a, a girl got pregnant, we didn't know about it until years. Mm -hmm. You know, all we know that she left school because people didn't talk mm -hmm. like they do, you know, things like they do now. Yeah. And she would just say that she, most of them had relatives living in other cities. Mm -hmm. And she didn't come back to school in September. Well, all we knew that she went to another school and went away. Mm -hmm. And five or six years down the road, well, you saw and so and so and so. And I'm saying, when? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right now. So that's how it was back then. They didn't, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, most of the time, you know, she went to another state, finished school, you know, yeah. that sort of thing, yeah. And of course, when it was a hard time, the grandparent would raise the child. Mm -hmm. So that was a big, you know, it wasn't just a whole lot of mm -hmm. news going on, you know. Within the county, now uh, nationally, of course, I remember the 1954, you know, decision about school integration. Mm -hmm. That was one of the big things that you know the teachers discuss in the class, you know. So, so that was it. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you want to talk more about that news, like the integration? Well, I think my sister can tell you more. See, because the time I graduated, it hadn't even come full blown uh -huh. till 1963, right in there. Now my sister, she made the transition mm -hmm. from segregated to integrated. But I always attend a segregated school. Mm -hmm. Everything was segregated here. So, but uh, our teachers would discuss the situation and what we need to do, what we need, you know, in case, you know. But uh, my sister can tell you more about mm -hmm. that than I can because at the time, mm -hmm. 1959, that was way before, you know, it became a national thing, you know. In the state of Virginia, mm -hmm. I think was, six, yeah, because I was, out of high, I was out of high school. I was living in Philadelphia, yeah. So uh, do you used to, like, you know, discuss about it with your friends? Or, like, of course, you had your own opinion about it, right? So. Like, did you used to discuss with your friends or in your family or, you know, wherever you went after the graduation? About integration? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and within, the fa within our family, we were always taught to behave yourself, be respect respectful. Mm -hmm. And, of course, my grandparents be living here so long, they would tell you, I should have put this, the nice white people and the people, white people that weren't so nice. Mm -hmm. And we used to walk from where I live down to Saluda on, especially on weekends, Saturdays, we get our allowances. And they would tell you, don't go this person's, mm. you know, and don't, and if, and if this person, this family was nice, 
this one was so mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. So, and you didn't go on the lawn or, or stop in front of the, the lawn. You walked past, but the nice people, you know, most of the time they would come out, they had an eye on you and they know who you were. <laughs> So, but that's way we discussed, you know, the good ones from the ones that weren't so nice. Yeah. In, yeah. So, um, like, did your experiences at St. Clair Walker High School affect your life socially or, you know, like, educationally of following course. your graduation? You know? Of course, it affect your life, you know, uh, because as I say, they taught you mm -hmm. how to go out in the world, how to talk, and socially, you know. Yeah, of course, nobody's perfect. <laughs> so, I remember uh, I tried to smoke, <laughs> and my grandmama, oh, they just don't smoke. So you didn't smoke, but I would sneak every night and smoke a cigarette. And all of a sudden, you know, you had your allowance and you work for what? I'm missing my cigarettes. <laughs> well, I see. And I found out my brother was sneaking my cigarettes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I stopped smoking right then and there, and I'm glad I did. <laughs> because with the health reason. But uh, that was one of the experiences that I tried. I think it was about the seventh grade I tried smoke because that was a thing. <laughs> and so, but education-wise, if not been for the teachers and the dedication, I wouldn't have known where I would have ended up. You know, mm -hmm. I was able to, because I'm one of the people that if these kids are here today, well, if I don't get a, a white collar job, as they call it, mm -hmm. they won't work with the hands. And I say, it don't matter when you work with your hand and everybody don't have the brain mm -hmm. power to be, mm -hmm. to work. But if you work in an honest living, I feel that's all that matter. And in high school, I was, that got over on me better than anything was hard work. You gonna, if you work your brain, you, it's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. If you do it with your hands, it's going to be hard. But you can be success at either one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I learned in high school, that you can't be a success. And they need you. Technology, but as I say, everybody don't have the brain to go into technology, but they're still building houses. They're still need mechanics to work on your car. So that's a good, you can make a living at that with your, with your hands. It's easy to work hard. Yes, yes, I was, yeah. I believe in working hard for what you get. Don't be dependent on somebody else to give it to you. I wasn't, I wasn't taught that way in the home or in school. You work. So. It sounds like you've worked hard. Yeah, I, 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 I believe that. Yeah. And, uh, and I taught that to my kids because my mm -hmm. grandmother and my grandfather and my mom and daddy used to tell me, you might have to crawl, but that don't say you're going to have to stay there. Mm -hmm. Every time you move, move up. Yes. 
Um, so now we're interested in Cook's Corner and Black-owned businesses in the area. Um, so we have a few questions about them. That's a disappointment. Mm. Because when I was a child, yeah. we had a little store mm -hmm. where, but a mile from where we could walk. Mm -hmm. It was more black business back there then than it is now. Yeah. And that's very disappointing to this younger generation and to me. Mm -hmm. There's it's no true. black business in Middlesex. I think one or two might be mm -hmm. in Middlesex now. So uh, why do you think so? Like, you know, that's happening here. Why do because food lies <laughs> with the stores, you know, people start a as I say the small black businesses and it's a in the other word progress mm -hmm. because Exxon if you say go and get gas and the oil at this little country store, then here come Exxon opening up a station. And and back there, then too, uh, with integration, we've been, you know, a banner was the grocery store, and they carried more products than in the country store, you know, the little country store was. And then we had restaurants, black-owned restaurants. So here come McDonald's and, and Burger King and put them kind of out, out of business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's less black business in Middlesex County than it back then when I was, now than it was when I was a child, back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. So do you have any earliest memories of Cook's Corner or hearing about it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Cook's Corner. I remember when it wasn't a, all oh, that Cook's Corner was black. Wasn't white people own Cook's Corner. Mm. All black business from Cook's Corner all the way to a banner and from Cook's Corner coming down to past St. Clair Walker High School with black owned businesses. Wow. Now, and then two, I think two what caused it, caused it mm -hmm. is when the older people mm -hmm. died out, the younger people had left and was established up north, they say. Mm -hmm. And they saw no reason at the time to come back here. So the older people had nobody to take over what they established. Mm -hmm. And, and again, going back to making a living, see, uh, with families, they had to stay where they could make a living and, you know, and they couldn't hear um, economics, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about Herman Wakes? Who? Um, Herman's? Herman Wick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he had the dance hall. <laughs> yeah, I remember him. He, uh, he had the, the restaurant per dance hall. Mm. That's where you, on weekends you hang out at Herman Wick's. And, uh, they call it the club now. Mm. <laughs> but that's what... Yeah. Did you ever hang out there? Yeah, I used to go there uh, once in a while. But uh, in my household, 
if you didn't go to church mm -hmm. the Sunday prior, mm -hmm. you weren't going at that house to no dance hall on no Saturday night. Wow. Mm -hmm. Honey, that was your punishment. Mm -hmm. So church was the main focus in my household. Mm -hmm. And I used to go once in a while. Most of the time that, I, that I've gone there was during the summer months when school mm -hmm. was out. But, uh, you know, you, you didn't, if you didn't go to church on Sunday, you won't go in that, no activities mm -hmm. other than, <laughs> so, that's the way it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta go to church. You that's got, right. you have to, you <laughs> had to go to church. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you remember about Mr. Butler Harris's outdoor movie? Yeah, he had the, I remember when he had the, baseball diamond. Mm. And uh, he was a member of our, the church that I attend now. Uh, him and Miss Lucy. Uh, and he had the, what was it, Tasty Freeze, I think it was. Well, I remember I used to go to baseball games on Saturdays at the baseball diamond. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then do you remember Miss Frances Jackson's ice cream parlor? Yes, yes, <laughs> you just, you'd go there too, and because back there then, the black restaurants were the only restaurants the black people had to go. Mm -hmm. We couldn't go to a banner like we go now to a restaurant. We couldn't go to different restaurants like back there then, so... Miss Frances Jackson, yes, we used to go and buy ice cream, and Daddy used to take us out to dinner there sometime. Wow. And hot dogs and hamburgers on weekends. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Um, and then, did you ever, what do you remember about Mr. Lynn Davis's restaurant, Chukchu? Well, I never, I wasn't allowed to go mm -hmm. there. In high school, no, I wasn't allowed to go there. Did you ever go there after high school? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We used to come down in the summer, and uh, the kids call the club now. But <laughs> we used to go there in the summer on Saturday night sometimes. <laughs> what was it like to... Uh, um, stay out on a Saturday night and need to go to church in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> it looked like they would call you 5 o'clock in the morning. Get up, get ready to go to church. <laughs> Look like <'cause laughs> yeah. Oh, that was hard getting out of that bed and getting dressed and going to church. But that was the rule. You had to do it. And don't care how old you were, you was going to church. So, yeah. I'm in your time. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you remember about Cook's Corner establishments through, or about what do you remember about other Cook's Corner establishments through your own experience or other people's experiences? Well, let's see. Most, most of the time, most of the Cook's Corners, I say, were restaurants and recreational things. Now, they had a it's been I don't know, a long time ago they had a, a shoe repair shop down the road from Cuscona. Mr. Washington, he was a World War II veteran, and he opened up a shoe shop. And he worked there till he died. I think it's, I don't think it's, uh, I'm trying to think if Miss Liam's still living. I think so. She, oh, if she is, she's about a hundred. But he had a, he had a shoe repair shop 
on the road, a little bit locust corner. And he had the doctor's office, Dr. Tony's office, there on Ed Coast Corner. So, and we don't have a, hardly have a doctor in Wilson's County, black or white. I mean, in the Luda area. Mm -hmm. Now everybody going to the Clint, the, going to the urgent care. Oh, we don't we we don't have a a doctor in that area in Memphis County. Mm -hmm. So So um I just want to like know um if you remember about your high school life, like how do you like to like sum it up? It was some of the best days of my life. That, St. Clair Walker High School, education-wise and social. Mm -hmm. Because, as I say, in an area like this, you would on the farm and you didn't see nobody tell mm -hmm. <laughs> <to> school. <laughs> but the school or church, you know, yeah. <laughs> so I enjoyed my time at St. Clair Walker. And So it was part of some of the best days of my life, because, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, do you have your, like, you know, high school friends over here? Like, do you guys meet? Yeah, talk? I have, uh, yeah, quite a few that still living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, see, Francis. Same. I'm still yeah, with with even the ones that uh live in the other part of the country, we still communicate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Uh so like just looking at today's situations, you know, like uh what do you think uh would have been better? Like, you know, like talking about like recent incidents that's happening around the school or something. Why do you think, like, you know, should it have been better or, like, would have done something well, else? Well, that's a, that's a hard question to answer mm -hmm. with today as what's happening today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very, very hard to answer that question. That's true. To me, you know, it's, let's say I'm from the old school and things you hear, if you, don't want, you see, if you don't want to answer, that's fine. Yeah. Things you see is, oh my goodness, you never thought that you would see was happening. At my age, mm -hmm. not different from you all, yeah. at my age, you never thought you would see happening in the, in the world and in this country. You never, you never, you never thought that. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. So um, I think we're almost done with all the questions, uh, but we just want to ask you, like, if there's anything, you know, you want to share uh, with us, with uh, the world history, to anyone who is hearing, watching it, is there anything you want to let them know? Well... I would say, because you have uh, the, to the younger people, mm -hmm. appreciate what you have today. And never give up hope. Never give up hope. Things seem so hard now, but never give up hope. That's all, you know, that's all I can say because I'm looking at it through my age, mm -hmm. you know. So, so I've, I have come and seen a 
you high. But you never give up hope. Never give up hope. So, just to add with that, like, uh, is there any, like, any of those words that you got from your parents or your teacher that still rings in your mind, you know, and then keeps you moving forward in your life? Well, I just summed it up. Uh, they always stress to do the best you can. Don't wait for somebody to do for you. Mm. Work hard. You set goals for yourself, not for somebody else. And you'll be okay. You'll be okay. That's, that's really deep. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we are done with the. Yeah.